So, we can see that the square root of 3 is inseparable from certain regular geometric shapes. In the two-dimensional plane, the square root of 3 is contained in the vesica Pisces, as well as the two regular polygons generated by it, the equilateral triangle and the regular hexagon. In the three-dimensional plane, the square root of 3 can be found in the cube, the tetrahedron, and the unified vector field. It is only in the last 50 years that we as a race have gained the ability to peer into the structure of the very matter of this universe. Using modern technologies, we have begun to plumb the depths of atoms and molecules, and what has been found is that an inordinate number of molecules employ geometric arrangements in their atomic structures. Amazingly, the square root of 3 proportion, heralded by sacred geometry for thousands of years as a sacred number, is an inherent aspect of many of these structures. Some of the most common substances to us have atomic and molecular structures based on the square root of 3. Here we see a structural section of a water ice crystal. Note the tetrahedral arrangement of the oxygen molecules, pictured here in blue, which are tied to one another by hydrogen bonds, shown here in yellow. The matrix formed in water ice is a series of nested tetrahedrons, with stacks of smaller tetrahedrons forming encompassing tetrahedrons. It is also interesting to note that while on a microcosmic level, water ice forms along a tetrahedral lattice, on the macrocosmic level, such as is found in the common snowflake, the tetrahedral lattice creates an obviously hexagonal pattern. As noted earlier, both the tetrahedron and the hexagon are intrinsically tied to the square root of 3 proportion. When boiled, water also forms hexagonal cells. These hexagonal cells, pictured here in a false color image, are commonly referred to as Bernard cells, after the French physicist Henri Bernard, who discovered them at the beginning of the 20th century. Bernard found that when very thin layers of water are evenly heated, the resulting convection currents form hexagonal cells. In these convection currents, heated molecules rise near the center of the cells and cool molecules descend along the edge of the cell walls. Water appears to be able to maintain its square root of three patterns no matter what state it occupies. Many noteworthy structures can also be found in pure metals, or metallic crystals. Metallic crystals differ from other substances in the fact that their molecules tend to be very densely packed, and as we shall see, this close-packed aspect oftentimes leads directly to the formation of lattices based on the square root of 3. Three basic lattices are found throughout metallic crystals. The first, known as face-centered cubic, can be found in metals such as calcium, aluminum, and strontium. Note the obvious cubic structure. The second type of lattice found in metallic crystals, labeled bodied centered cubic, can be found in such metals as lithium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, barium, and sodium, also known as common salt. Once again, an obvious cubic arrangement appears. But note that with this lattice in particular, the bonds between individual molecules follow exactly the square root of 3 transversal. Whereas with face-centered cubic lattices, the molecules merely imply the square root of 3 via their overall cubic form, in bodied-centered cubic configurations, the square root of 3 is an inherent aspect of the crystal structure. The final metallic crystal structural configuration is known as the hexagonal close-packed lattice. It can be found in such metals as magnesium and beryllium. As the name implies, the hexagon, and thus the square root of 3, is the geometric basis for this molecular arrangement. Metallic crystals and water ice are not the only common substances in which square root of 3 lattices can be found. Here we see the molecular structure of sodium chloride, also known as common table salt. Its formation can be aptly described as two interpenetrating face-centered arrays, one of sodium ions and the other of chloride ions. Many substances arrange themselves in hexagonal patterns. 
and this is particularly true for the substances known collectively as the network solids. All network solids possess atomic arrangements that form indefinitely extending three-dimensional networks. The hexagon, due to its ability to be arranged in regularly divided grids, is just the right geometric form to create such indefinitely extending networks. To find an example of such a hexagonal matrix, we need only look so far as the common mineral quartz. This diagram shows the top view of quartz's molecular structure and represents the form of quartz that is found as an abundant component of ordinary sand. Along with other substances, graphite and cadmium chloride share the hexagon as their fundamental molecular unit. Graphite forms flat layers of interlocked hexagons, which gives each layer substantial strength in two dimensions, but allows these layers to easily shear off from one another. This soft yet hard characteristic makes graphite the perfect material for making writing implements, as well as dry lubricants and polishes. The carcinogen known as cadmium chloride, on the other hand, forms interlocked layers of adjacent tetrahedrons. If we isolate a single layer of either cadmium or chlorine atoms, we find the same regular hexagonal division of the plane as we discerned in graphite. However, because cadmium chloride's hexagonal planes are tied to one another with bonds following stable tetrahedral geometry, cadmium chloride will not cleave into layers as graphite does. Here we see the atomic arrangement of carbon tetrachlorine, which possesses an obviously cubic atomic arrangement accented in red. However, if we connect the four chlorine atoms, shown as yellow spheres, we find that a tetrahedron is formed within the body of the cube. This inner tetrahedron is imaged here in blue. This overlapping arrangement of both tetrahedral and cubic structures allows us to define the structure of carbon tetrachlorine as both tetrahedral and cubic, or complex tetracubic. Nature seems to have noted the interchangeable relationship between the tetrahedron and the cube as well, as we find in many substances complex combinations of cubic and tetrahedral matrices. Diamond, formed of elemental carbon, is the absolute hardest substance formed by nature, and is also a superb example of a combined cubic and tetrahedral lattice. We see its structure here with a red, face-centered cubic structure superimposed on it, the outermost atoms in diamond's lattice form a perfect face-centered cubic structure. However, if we instead accent the tetrahedral organization of the form, we find that it is similar to the structure of water ice. As with ice, diamond consists of stacked tetrahedrons, but in the case of diamond, the pyramid of tetrahedrons is laid on its edge, and thus fits perfectly into an enclosing cube. Therefore, Diamond's form can be concurrently considered both a perfect face-centered cubic design and a perfect nested tetrahedral structure. Another excellent example is found in calcium fluoride, shown here. The yellow spheres in this diagram represent calcium atoms, whereas the light blue spheres represent fluoride atoms. The light blue fluoride atoms fall at the center of a tetrahedron formed by four surrounding calcium atoms. The four points of each tetrahedron touch either the corners or the center points of the faces in an enclosing cube, shown in red. When the tetrahedrons for each fluoride atom are added, we see the complexity of the overall design. The eight light blue fluoride atoms not only fall at the center of eight tetrahedrons, but they also form a secondary cube that is exactly one-half the size of the surrounding cube.